fish. Nice job, man. Thanks, buddy. All right, that is what we're in for here on this episode of the new Fly Fisher. Unbelievable brown trout fishing in the Beaverkill and the Willowemock. We're in Sullivan County in the Catskill Mountains. Deep in New York, this big fish adventure starts right now on the new Fly Fisher. That is amazing. There's a take. Oh, nice. Power, all right. The new Fly Fisher is supported by Sullivan Catskills, Orvis Fly Fishing, Trout Unlimited, Real Products, Oscar Blues Brewery, Global Rescue. Boatworks. Welcome to Sullivan County Catskills. A short drive from New York City finds you in one of the most storied fly fishing destinations in the Northeast. The Catskill Mountains, historically famous, the region remains so today for access to excellent fishing for many species, including brook, rainbow, and brown trout on fly. If you wanted to come here and just walk away from the public parking area, you could find yourself in ultimate wilderness, fishing over fish that very few people have ever fished over. All you gotta do is get out of the car and walk and still have accessibility to public fishing. That's what makes this place so wonderful. All of the miles that are open to the angler to fish. It's springtime in New York State. Winter has finally released its icy grip. The weather is warm, the creeks have stabilized, and the bugs are just starting. The fishing should be excellent. Joining me in Sullivan County Catskills is good friend Tom Rosenbauer. Tom grew up close to here and knows the area intimately. We're staying at the Rose Cottage Bed and Breakfast in Bruce, New York, just a stone's throw from Livingston Manor, home away from home, steps away from the Willowy Mock and Mongop Creek. Tom, I can't emphasize enough how important it is whenever you go to a brand new place to fish, like such as I am here in the Catskills, um, always rely on locals. Local knowledge is key. You've been fishing here all your life. Um, this is a Willow Rewalk. Where do we start? Well, the first thing I do is I call a guide or a fly shop around here because things change. And, you know, we've been chasing hatches and we haven't really hit it. And the, the rivers here have such great hatches. They're really diverse hatches. And it's the fun way to fish the Catskills. But it can be frustrating because yeah. you've got you to run around and, and look just to be in the right run on the right day at the right time. That's why. I've got a woolly bugger on because yep. we've got to catch fish. Yep. We want to catch fish. Yep. While we're waiting for something to go off, why not prospect, right? Yep. You know, you can nymph fish. There's, it's, it isn't the easiest nymph fishing in the world in the Catskills, but certain certain rivers and certain runs. You know, the Beaver Kill's pretty good. The West Branch of the Delaware is pretty good. You have to find the right run, and um, that can be productive. But it's it's work. It's more work. All right. Well, let's see what we can do. All right. So Tom will start with a nymph rig, two nymphs under an indicator, and I begin with a woolly bugger. We are effectively fishing the entire water column to see what these trout just might want. So you want to put on as small an indicator as you can get away with. This big indicator I have here is just way too heavy for this water. Notice my casting is really clunky. I can't really false cast with it. It's bouncing all over the place. And when it hits the water, it makes a big splat. It's probably gonna spook the fish, and it just makes casting tough. So go with an indicator that's that's big enough to float the flies, but not so big that it's gonna make a big splat on the water. I really like a yarn 
indicator. It's a lot easier to cast. Um, it doesn't land with a big splat like the plastic ones do. And it's actually a lot more sensitive. Sometimes strikes are difficult to detect on flat water because the fish doesn't take the fly as hard, but that yarn will really, really bounce and wiggle when you have a strike. Sometimes yarn indicators get a little waterlogged. They're not, they're not totally waterproof like the plastic kind are. So you're gonna have to retreat them. So there's a couple things you can do. One is you can make a couple of quick false casts, just like you would a dry fly, to dry it off. And that should help. But if it still continues to sink and you can't see it, uh, it's easy enough to just bring the indicator in and take the same dry fly powder, desiccant powder, dip it in there, grind it around a little bit, make sure it's thoroughly dried. And now that indicator will float high for another hour or two. Tom nipped through this little run here against the bank and uh, I decided that I was gonna follow him behind him with a, with a red-headed egg-sucking leech, kind of like a, <clears throat> well, it's an egg-sucking leech, actually. And uh, I was able to move this brown twice, didn't sting it in any way, but then um, decided I'd best give it a bit of a rest. So cast upstream for 30 seconds or so, and then uh, put it back in and came out and ate it. So if you, if you see a fish, if you flash a fish, and you don't prick the fish, give that, give that fish a bit of a rest and uh, go right back at it, same spot, and chances are, maybe change size of the fly, and chances are you'll be able to meet one of these chunky wild browns. Thanks, buddy. One of the most effective and subtle ways you can fish with a nymph is to use a dry fly for your indicator. We call it a dry dropper. And you just tie on a big, fairly visible, high floating dry fly. You tie a piece of tippet on the bend of that hook and you put a nymph underneath it. Now you have to be careful, you can't use a super heavy nymph because it'll drown the dry fly. And this kind of thing works better, usually when there's a bit of a hatch going on, there might be a few fish rising, but when you know the fish are looking up at the surface or they're more active, it doesn't work that well in super cold water where you know the fish are glued to the bottom. One of my favorite rigs for fishing a dry dropper is a fly called the Chubby Chernobyl. It's a foam bodied fly, it has highly visible wings and I use that as my dry fly and then I'll tie a bead head and a chubby Chernobyl will float or will suspend even a smaller bead head fly so it's a great fly to use in this kind of rig so I'm gonna just grab one of my high floating chubby Chernobyls and tie it onto my tippet just the normal way and then I'll put a piece of tippet on the bend of the hook with a clinch knot. And I usually use fluorocarbon because that sinks a little bit quicker than nylon, so it'll help that nymph sink a little bit better. I'm gonna just take a piece of 5X fluorocarbon and I'm gonna tie it around the bend of this dry fly. So this one happens to be about, I don't know, foot long, maybe a little bit longer. And then I'll just put on, I don't know, a little copper john, and that's all there is to it. A dry dropper rig. There had to be one there. Well, I did not expect that. There's nothing remotely like this chubby Chernobyl on the water right now. Just goes to show you, I put on that big dry fly and, and this beautiful brown trout came up and just inhaled that big dry fly. Beautiful brown trout. The joys of dry dropper fishing. What a beautifully colored brown. Bye, buddy. The Rose Cottage in DeBruce, New York is a full service bed and breakfast just steps from the Willowemock and Mongop Creeks. And it's just a short drive to some of the larger rivers in Sullivan County Catskills. 
famous rivers such as the Delaware and Beaverkill, to name a few. The Rose Cottage, a century heritage building, has been newly renovated and leaves anglers feeling at home, away from home. Comfortable staterooms, each with a private bathroom, seasonal meals prepared by Chef Edwin, and access to trails, ponds, and creeks make the Rose Cottage ideal for anglers and couples alike. I absolutely love fishing a plunge pool. I never pass it up. And there's four reasons why I think that they're so um, attractive to fish. Number one is that as you can see, there's sort of a semi-natural barrier to transmission upstream for these fish. So they'll generally hold in that spot. Number two is that it's full of oxygen. As you can see, there's a ton of bubbles. There's a ton of O2 in the water. Fish will love that. Number three is it's a natural thoroughfare for food. They'll sit there and wait for bugs and minnows and other things to filter down the river, it's a catch basin. And number four, probably most important, is as you can see, it's well shaded. It's covered, it's protection for these fish, and it's deep. And fish on. I bring them over here into the soft water. Now Tom made a really good point on this fish that doesn't serve you any good to throw your flies into the white water because the fish simply can't see it. What you want to do is find those darker lanes where the bubbles are not. Start closer, strip it in a little further, a little further out. We had four flashes on this fly before this fish finally came tight. And uh, what fun, what absolute fun. Look at that. Fantastic fish. So what I did on this, in this plunge pool here, is I actually cut my leader down um, from nine feet to probably about six feet. Um, it's really turbulent water. The fish don't need to be leader shy in here. Uh, attach the egg sucking leech to it. And um, the fish are just going crazy. These browns are just loving this. Chunky fish, wow, that's the best one of the day for me. Now that, if you're ever have a picture trout, that's it. This is the stuff that they make stickers out of for sure. It's every cast here on the Willowy Mock. It's unbelievable. Look at that wild fish. Just amazing. Usually you fish a dry dropper on a fairly short dropper, the nymphs on a fairly short dropper, uh, you know, six to eight inches. Um, but there are times when a really long dropper, like a five foot piece of 5X will work very well, especially in deeper water. So I'm gonna take that same Copper John and I'm gonna put a much longer dropper on and just see if that does anything. So now we got a fish on the nymph with the dry dropper, on the long dropper. Went to the longer dropper and uh, that seemed to do the trick. Probably just needed to get that nymph a little bit deeper. And one for the Copper John.
Sullivan County Catskills has a deep and storied fly fishing past. Many claim the first dry fly was fished in these waters, right where we're fishing at the confluence of the Willowemock and Mongok Creeks. The fly was a pink lady tied by George LaBranche. The region is peppered with all things fly fishing, including many fly shops, the Catskill Fly Fishing Center, museum, and even rod shop. Fly fishing is the heart of Sullivan County Catskills. You literally see it everywhere. The fishing, uh, well, we say in Willowemock up in Bruce, it's the best fishing east of the Mississippi. And uh, as long as the water's up, we have the water, it's great fishing, absolutely. Uh, here, you're two hours from uh, New York. You can get in your car, you can drive up, and you can have a great day and excellent places to stay. So you can have a great weekend. You're gonna catch fish here, just like you're gonna catch fish uh, in Montana or Colorado. But here you can do it, here you can do it every day. The wading is comparatively simple. The rivers are flat bottomed, which means that someone from nine years old to 90 won't have any fear of in the river system. We don't have any real drop-offs or anything to this effect. And you can get in and walk around and, and fish dry fly somewhat easier than the river systems out west, which run super fast and honestly, you really just fish from the banks. Here you're, you have a real chance of getting in the water and enjoying yourself in the water. At the end of your cast, don't just give up and bring your fly line back in to cast again. What you wanna do is gently lift your rod tip. I've got a woolly bugger and a nymph on under an indicator. And what happens is when you lift that rod tip slowly at the end of your cast, it's, it stimulates two things. Number one, it looks like that woolly bugger is trying to escape. And number two, that nymph looks like it's actually rising in the water column and emerging. Fish oftentimes will take it as that rig rises up. <laughs> that was a big fish. Yeah, it was. I didn't touch him either. Did he take your fly? Nope, I didn't touch him. Interesting. A there. fish on a chubby again. That was cool. So he came up to this pool and Tom suggested that I actually dead drift a woolly bugger and have a copper john as a as a dropper fly under an indicator. And right away we were seeing brown trout come out. We had a brown trout come up and actually strike the indicator. Um, so maybe maybe they're looking up. Maybe they're maybe they are, but I was definitely dragging this woolly bugger and came up and ate it. I do not mind. What fun. Just perfect. Unbuttoned. Make sure that second fly is free and let him go. <laughs> and fish on. That technique works, it really does. At the end of your cast, gently lift your rod tip. It, it acts like that muddler minnow's escaping or that nymph is emerging. It's deadly for brown trout. So if there's ever a downside for fishing a double fly rig under an indicator or a double fly rig of any kind is that oftentimes, sometimes a fish will come up and try to attack the front fly or the point fly and as it rolls out or misses that fly it gets hooked by the trailer this is what's happened here and in order to not lose my stuff you really got kind of do have to play these fish in so you can not leave them with a bit of jewelry 
he's come up and tried to eat it and he and he got hooked as he rolled on it it's sort of in his in his side luckily it's the top fly see that's what happens that's part of the problem with having a uh, a double fly rig but nice fish anyway He did eat the worm. I wanted to try a squirmy worm in here. It's, <laughs> it's a fly that a lot of people look down on, um, <clears throat> but it's kind of interesting. It's not a not a typical fly. I've got a copper john on there, which is a a very very typical um, you know Catskill fly or typical nymph. Um, but I wanted to try a squirmy worm just to see, uh, just to see what would happen. And this fish uh, obviously liked the squirmy. Pretty hefty. Barbless hook, and away he goes. On the mop. So this is another um, questionable fly in some people's minds. Uh, just caught a fish on a worm fly, which people hate. And so I figured I'd try another fly that people don't like and snub their noses on. And that's a mop fly. It's basically a, a piece of mop yarn with a little, a little dubbing up front. It's a fly. People say it's not a fly, but in my opinion it is. You can tie it on a hook. Takes a little bit of skill in fly tying, and uh, this little wild brown trout seemed to love it. Oh, maybe not a wild brown trout, by the looks of his fins. Equipment for this brown trout adventure in Sullivan County Catskills is as follows. Both Tom and I were wielding a four-weight, nine-foot fly rod with matching four-weight, weight-forward floating lines. 3X tapered trout leader with a 4X tippet tied to a variety of nymphs, streamers, and terrestrials. Oh, nice. Good fish. He ate the woolly bugger. This is a dark fish. Looks good. Woo, nice brownie. That's amazing. Well, that about does it for this episode of The New Fly Fisher. I want to thank you for watching. It's been an absolutely amazing adventure here in the Catskill Mountains. Remember, adventure is out there and all you need to do is go and find it. And what better way than to do it with a fly rod in your hand. For more in our series, check us out at www.thenewflyfisher.com. From everybody here at The New Fly Fisher, I'm Mark Melnick and hopefully we'll see you in the Catskills. The New Fly Fisher is supported by Sullivan Catskills, Orvis Fly Fishing, Trout Unlimited, Real Products, Oscar Blues Brewery, Global Rescue, Adipose Boatworks,